Tad Brown. Huh? Tad Brown says when booking a venue, how long do you book it for considering setup, tear up, walkthroughs, et cetera? How long for a Raw versus a Backlash versus a WrestleMania? Is it about, I mean, I know WrestleMania is a, is a much different opportunity and well, any stadium show is, but for a typical arena show, what do you think that looks like as far as when you guys are unloading to when you're pulling out? We're in and out, man. We, we are in, in and out for a regular live event. You're in in the afternoon and you're out by 2 a.m. For a television, you're in early, early in the morning and you're out early, early in the next morning. So it's, it's 24 hours easy. Now, for a stadium show, see what you, what you have to understand for a stadium show is that we've got to build a lot of structure yes. in stadiums. If, if most stadiums, like a domed stadium, a lot of them don't have the foundation. They don't have the structure, load-bearing structure that we need to hang things, to, to put lights up, to put all of the uh, videos and everything that, that we put up. So that's, that's a good week-long process, you know, coming in and probably about three or four days coming out. But you got to build a lot. And, and you know, for example, you know, still even, even to this day, you look at a place like uh, Saudi Arabia in, in the Jeddah Dome. It's a building that was built. It's a huge, big, beautiful dome. But that's it. That's it. There are no dressing rooms. There are no bathrooms. There are nothing. And all that has to come in and, and be assembled <laughs> before we come in to, to play the show. So it, it's it's crazy. Some of them um, in Orlando, the, the stadium that we did there, man, they had they had no backstage. They had two they had two locker rooms. That's it. Small locker rooms for when you think about it for a college football team, which is what it was used for. Um, they, they had no infrastructure. They had nothing backstage. They had no, you know, no offices, no star dressing rooms, no, uh, bathrooms. So we would literally build a city off of that, that would have dressing rooms, showers, bathrooms, offices, um, everything kind of off to the side, off in the parking lot. So, yeah, it, it really depends on the venue. Uh, Rob Dog says, did Vince solely go on the word of people like you and JR and Howard when bringing talent in, or would he do some video scouting as well? Well, Rob Dog, it really depended. I think that there were, you know, there were guys that came in sight unseen sometimes, you know, based strictly on, on reputation. Um but for the most part, you know, he would usually have seen something on them. And whether we showed him tapes, we showed him pictures, but I think the, the original, um, original, original would, would come from, would come from us usually. I'm going to move that. Okay. Michael wants to know, uh, do more crazy stories from back in the day while on the road, like crazy hotel stories or crazy truck stop stories, or at least give us a good story about Percy Pringle or maybe an Owen prank and keep up the good work. You know, we've spent some time talking about some Owen pranks over the years. We haven't spent a ton of time on, uh, Percy Pringle stories. You got any fun travel stories with him? Maybe at a hotel or a truck stop or just any fun road story. The, the, I, and I don't think I've told this one before, uh, but there was the, the, the famous hotel in Chicago was called the air host. All right. Right off the highway. Everybody stayed there for years and years and years and years and years. Cause it was cheap. So the boys stayed there and I'm talking, now I'm going back many generations. I'm going back into the sixties and seventies here and Bobby Heenan and Jack Lanza, Pat Patterson, um, guys from the Vern territory would always tell these legendary stories about the air host. And, uh, one night, you know, we, we were driving and, and going by and, uh, had infamously had Lisa Wolf with us, the HR 
dragon bitch. Um, and it's like, that's the air host. I had never been to the air host. So we stopped and went to the air host. And Lanza came, Bobby came, everybody came. And when we're there, you know, I mean, it, it is. They have they have a bar. Okay. So that's that's a plus. Yep. Okay. Uh they had cold beer, another plus. Um, guess kind of where the plus is ended. Now, Bobby starts telling a story. And he says, Ah, Pat, you remember the time that uh we stayed here and the room was so disgusting? And they started to laugh and they said, well, Let's take the mattress and box springs off we'll take a shit underneath the bed and leave it there he goes nobody will tell nobody will be able to tell the difference because this room is so disgusting it stinks so bad and they pull the mattress off and they pull the box springs off and bobby's ready to take a shit and they look someone already had <laughs> So right. you know that was the 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 wonderful the wonderful air host uh, story. I, I remember uh, Howard Finkel for for a run, man. Howard was in charge of by God saving the company money, and Howard was going to do all of our travel for televisions. Howard starts booking these these hotels and stuff, and he would. By God, he would wrangle for the, the best deal he could get. So we're going and checking into some places that are like 16 bucks a night. The first one was in Birmingham, Alabama. And I was coming from Houston, so I fly into Birmingham. And I'm like, where the hell am I? The night's in. What oh, the hell no. is this? Not good. I get to this hotel. It's a motel, not a hotel. Yeah. So for you, those of you that don't know the difference, a motel is you drive your car right up to the room. Okay, It's, it's an exterior like, door. Yes. You know, you don't go into a lobby and then go up an elevator or go your rooms aren't inside. It's an exterior door and you park right in front of it. <coughs> I go to the old night's in. And open the door, sixteen dollars, sixteen dollars a night. And they had purple shag carpeting. At this point in my life, I hadn't seen shag carpeting since my mother put it in our house when I was like eight years old. Shag carpeting in a motel. The TV's on, and the TV is a basically a documentary on the story of the Knights Inn and how the Knights Inns were came about and how they're built and they're built they're all prefab so they can they can put they can get land and they can pour the slab and they can have a Knights Inn hotel completely delivered and have it up inside of two weeks. Wow. Because once they put it in, all they do is hook up the plumbing and electricity and everything, and it's it's good to go because everything's pre-made. The, the the room is prefab, all the way into the shower. The everything is just boom. They put it down, and they hook up the the water. They hook up the electricity and hook some switches. Boom, you're ready. You got a ready-made hotel. Bring in the furniture. You're good to go. And on the wall. And I'll get to the other one on in a second. It was like a um, a moat, like the the outside of a castle, and it was the most disgusting thing that one of the most disgusting things that I've, I'd ever stayed in. And I remember calling Vince. He goes, "How'd Howard do?" I said, "Well, do you like shag carpet?" What? You like shag carpet? Shag carpet? What are you talking about? I said, yeah, I got purple shag carpet in, in this thing. 
And uh, once Vince Pat got there, I think we stayed there about another five minutes and got out and checked into a Hilton somewhere. It was disgusting. It was almost as good as, and, and I don't mean to disparage nice. I'm sure they're nice. I, I, no, they're not. They're the shit. Um, but same thing with Excalibur in uh, Las Vegas. Yes. Howard used to vacation by himself. He would save up all of his miles every year, and then he would go take a vacation by himself somewhere, usually Las Vegas. And he would go to Vegas uh, and gamble and eat at the buffets. But his gimmick was how little he could pay for anything. So he would schedule this so the, the flight was free from, from miles. The hotel was usually free and or absolutely nothing. Um, and then he would he would go and he would... He would stay there and gamble and do his thing. So he does this and he stays at the Excalibur. And this is when the Excalibur was brand new. <laughs> he booked everyone at the Excalibur. I think this one was like maybe 16 bucks, maybe 19 bucks. I don't know what it was. But we waited two hours in line. We get to our room and it had the same motif on the walls as the night's in, like a castle on the wall. Didn't have shag carpeting, but it was disgusting. Called for room service and all they really had for room service was hot dogs, pizzas, beer, and soda. Needless to say, we stayed there roughly about 20 minutes <laughs> and then went and checked in at Caesars and Howard was heartbroken. And it was after, it was after that, uh, the Excalibur that Howard was removed from his duties of getting hotels for TV. 